Welcome to Electron Online. So let's start with a simple circuit in order to find the Norton and Thevenin equivalent circuits. I know that the title says Thevenin equivalent circuits, but let's do both of them because it's just a simple circuit. So what was the methodology again? The first thing we're going to do is to find the Thevenin impedance. So we start by saying Z Thevenin equals question mark. And then the methodology was to take every source and change it. A voltage source becomes a, a open, no, a closed circuit or a short circuit, and a current source becomes an open circuit. We only have one voltage source, so it's always a good idea to redraw the circuit with the source removed. So this becomes a short circuit, and we still have an inductor, a capacitor, and over here we have a resistor, and then we have A and B terminals. All right, this is still a J20, this is a minus J10, and this is a 10 ohm resistor. So now what we're going to do is find the Thevenin impedance, which is the same as the impedance between terminals A and B with the source removed. So Z Thevenin equals Z from A to B, and then you can see that there is a parallel circuit right here. So from A around to B, we go to the 10 ohm resistor, and then we have the impedance right here, which is in parallel. So first, what we'll do is the following. We'll find the parallel impedance first. So Z parallel is equal to, here we're going to use the product over the sum. So we have uh, J20 multiplied times a negative J10, and divided by a J20 plus a negative J10. So that's equal to J times J is negative 1 times the negative is positive. That becomes 200 divided by the J10. And so that Z parallel is equal to, that's 20. Multiply this times a J times a J. So we have, uh, that's a negative. That becomes a minus 20J or minus J20. All right. So... This is equal to 20 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. That's the parallel portion of that impedance. Now we're going to add that to the 10 ohms. So we can now say that Z total is equal to the parallel impedance plus the 10 ohms. So in this case, that would be uh, uh, 10 minus J20. And so that would be the total impedance, which by the way, is always, is also the Thevenin and impedance. So now we have the Thevenin and impedance of the circuit. Let's go ahead and also put in the magnitude phase angle format. So Z Thevenin is equal to, uh, that would be, um, get my calculator, that would be 500, take the square root, which is 22.36, 22.36 with a phase angle of, that's uh, negative two, inverse tangent, minus 63.435 degrees. All right, so now we have the Thevenin impedance, so let's go ahead and draw the circuit then. So we need to have the Thevenin voltage, we don't have that yet. We have the Thevenin impedance, here's A, and here's B, and this here would be equal to 10 minus J20. All right, what about the voltage? So to find the voltage, we need to find the voltage from A to B with everything restored. So now what we do here is we come up here and we realize that the voltage from A to B, which by the way would be the Thevenin voltage, is the same as the voltage across the capacitor. So essentially this would be the Thevenin voltage right here across the capacitor. To find that, we need to find the current to the circuit. This part of the circuit, there's no current here, there's no load between A and B, so there's no current through the resistor, so we just have current around the mesh right here. And the current would be the voltage source divided by the impedance. So in this case, we could say that the current I is equal to the voltage of the source divided by the impedance of the, of the first mesh. So it would be 50 with a phase angle of 30 degrees divided by the impedance. Now notice that's a series circuit. So we end up with J20 minus J10, which is equal to 50 with a phase angle of 30 degrees divided by uh, J10. 
which is equal to 50 with a phase angle of 30 degrees divided by 10 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. It's positive 90 degrees, all right? So that means that the current is equal to 5 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees. So that's the current to this part of the circuit. That means that's the current through here. So we have the current through the capacitor, which we found right here. So now what we need to do is find the voltage. You know that I equals V over Z, which means that V is equal to I times Z. So in this case, V from A to B is equal to V Thevenin, which is equal to the current, which is 5, with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees, multiplied times the impedance. Now that would be the impedance of this right here, of the capacitor, that would be 10, with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. So this is equal to 50 with a phase angle of minus 150 degrees. Yeah, or we can write it as minus 50 with a phase angle of 30 degrees. Either way, get the same result. So that would be the source right here. So the source would be equal to, that would be V Thevenin. So V Thevenin is equal to 50 with a phase angle of minus 150 degrees. Now, what is the Norton equivalent circuit? So the Norton equivalent circuit would be a current source with the impedance in parallel, like this. So here's A and B terminals. And of course, the impedance is exactly the same, would be 10 minus J20. So this is the Norton impedance, Z Norton, which is the same as Z Thevenin. What about the current source? The current source, by definition, I Norton is equal to V, so we use the same equation right here, V uh, Thevenin divided by Z Thevenin. So V Thevenin is equal to 50 with a phase angle of minus 150 degrees. This divided by Z Thevenin, right here, which is 22.36 with a phase angle of minus 63.435 degrees, which is equal to 50 divided by 22.36 gives me 2.236. Hmm, interesting. Uh, with a phase angle of uh, 150 minus plus 63.435, that gives me minus 86.565 degrees. And that goes in here, that would be the uh, I Norton, which is equal to 2.236 with a phase angle of minus 86.565 degrees. So you can see that with a simple circuit like this, it's readily, fairly easy to find the equivalent Thevenin circuit and the equivalent Nor Norton circuit, which then allows you to put on a load onto the circuit and very easily calculate the current through the load and the voltage across the load. We'll show you how to do that in later videos, but at least this shows you with a relatively simple circuit how to find the Thevenin equivalent and the Norton equivalent circuits. And that is how it's done.